This is Betsy Kulikowski, author of the Veritas Codex series, and you're listening to Ghost in the Valley podcast. Leslie Fear is a podcast host, a paranormal romance author, and a mother. We will dive into her many books that she has written and her podcast. But first, welcome to the show, Leslie Fear. Hello, Al. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I want to start off by saying I love your name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I married a man whose last name was Fear, so it's legit. I was branding myself before I even knew it, right? Oh, OMG. You know, because I was uh, thinking, you know, I mean, for a paranormal <laughs> romance author, you know, that's perfect, you know? Right. I know. It's funny. It really, truly is. My People are like, oh, that's such a cool name you made up for your books. And I'm like, no, it's real. It, I <laughs> promise you, it's real. <laughs> you know, I've been a big fan of yours for a couple of years now. And I came across your podcast because I want to know. Yes. And, and immediately, I mean, I put it in my library. And then I heard you on the, the uh, Wendy Cokes podcast, uh, A Juicy Pair. Yes. And I said, man, I, I have to have this woman on my show. Uh, so thank you uh, for coming on. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. And I uh, have yet to listen to your podcast. I need to listen to it. I have just been bombarded with people that want to be on mine and trying mm-hmm. to schedule all that and then have a new grandbaby. So oh, that- congratulations. Thank you. She's 10 months old and we're obsessed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, yeah, it's a little girl. Her name's Kaya and she's almost 11 months old and we're literally just can't get enough of her. We watch her a few times a week for the kids. We're just thrilled. We're just so happy with that. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's nothing like it, right? Uh, I, there isn't. No, <clears throat> no, <there> isn't. no. <laughs> uh, before we get into your podcast, first, what led you into the paranormal field and to write uh, paranormal romance books? Well, it's funny you ask. Great question. I have always been really drawn to paranormal things every you know the haunted houses i used to love reading stephen king novels always loved horror movies and i just always have loved those things and when i was in college and i knew this beforehand i loved to write i love to write essays my friends were like you're weird and i'm like i am not weird i just like to write okay and so i started out just writing reading a lot and then writing reviews for books on goodreads and some people were approaching me saying, you need to, uh, you need to start writing books. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, I'm ranked on Goodreads. I don't need to be writing anything. They're like, uh, you need to be writing. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. I kind of blew that off. So, but that was, that was way after college, but I'm just kind of skipping. So you don't have to hear the old boring parts, but I, but I, you know, dabbled in it a little bit. And then I was approached by an, another author that I loved and read who was an independent author. And she was like, Hey, let's, let's write a book together. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, she took me on, which was amazing. And then she kicked my butt because she made me a better writer and she'd say, Nope, redo this whole chapter. And I'm like, but, but, it, <laughs> you know, and you know, no, but she really did. She made me a better writer. Her name was Carla Hussey and her last name was Hussey. Yeah. Fear, fear and hussy on the same uh, book. Oh, right. You know, yeah. and that was one of my other questions on the line was, you know, you I've seen that you co-written a, uh, a couple of books with uh, yeah. D.D. Hussey. Yeah. And I said, I hope I say her name right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Car- Carla, is, as I can remember, I guess my sister's name. So how did collaboration come about? I mean, did you know well, her from college or early you years? You know, or? I... Yeah, no, I just read, I read a couple of her books and she and I had, well, she and I both had a friend in common and we were introduced through her because I was like, man, I just really like this author. She goes, it's funny because, and the reason she and I knew about C.D. Hussey is because C.D. Hussey had a free book and we always love the free books that you can read. And she was really good. And we were talking and I'm like, gosh, I'd love to meet her. 
And because I had some insight on Goodreads, because I used to review books, mm-hmm. I started talking to her through Goodreads. And I was like, I really love your books, you know, and we kind of garnered a friendship. She was in Kansas City. I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So we're not real far away from each other. And we just kind of got to know each other. And that's when it started. And and honestly, it was more about me asking her than her asking me. Uh-huh. But she was really <laughs> cool about it. And and like I said, and she and I have but we've written two books together and we're still really good friends. So you know. You you gotta have some thick skin, and we're still friends. Right, right. You know, because you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, even like for podcasting, you know, I'm all for criticism, but I love constructive criticism. You know, not just that your podcast sucks. You know, <laughs> you know, oh, but right, yeah. you know, and and I listened to that because when I was going about, you know, I never had commercials, and I started putting commercials in to help pay for some of the uh, costs. Sure. Yeah, because you and I are both uh, solo uh, podcast hosts. You know, and okay. editing yeah. and and getting the guests and, and advertising oh. and, you know, all the, all the, all that fancy oh. stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I know what it's like to have the criticism, but when somebody contacted me and said, you know, you really have too many commercials, your commercials are, I turn it off because uh, you have like five minutes of commercials at the beginning. I said, wow, okay, let me go back and check. I think, like, well, you know, what I do, you know? And so okay. I, I listened to that. I cut it back to like, you know, pepper the commercials into where it's not so overkill. Mm-hmm. Because you right. will you will lose your listeners, you know. But I haven't done that route yet. I've been approached by people that want to sponsor me and that kind of thing. But they're the oh, you make two cents on you know a thirty second commercial, and I just I'm at the point where I'm like, unless somebody really wants to pick me up, I don't want this to become a job. All right. <laughs> so I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it for free because I love spreading awareness out. I love spreading awareness about you know I, I don't want people to be afraid to die. And I, I you know I, I talk to near death experiencers and I talk to all these different kinds of people. I hopefully spread awareness on that. Spread awareness on you know being in cults or leaving a cult or you know just people in prison that everybody's redeemable that kind of stuff you know and you try to spread awareness in that respect and I love doing it and I do think that because I love doing it I'm pretty good at it now I've oh done yeah it that, excellent pretty- oh thank you <laughs> so, <laughs> and I just like I said I just I just truly love it but it's not my full time job I don't have a job like job job i don't go to a daytime job i mm-hmm. watch your grandbaby and i this is truly just a hobby of mine i'm just so proud of it and i'm at the point where unless you know somebody maybe bigger wants to pick me up i don't care i don't this sounds really snobby and i don't mean it to i don't need the money i don't mm-hmm. need that i just i do this because i truly love it i sure. know how hard it is i mean after 50 years of playing in a in a band you know writing songs and cds and publishing and copywriting i know that that end of it Right. You know, so I, my uh, book I have coming out, my first book, <laughs> I, I joke about, but you know, it's taken me 55 years to write, you know, oh, wow. and, and it's going to be a three part series, but the first part is, you know, uh, I won't, I won't get too much of my, my stuff, but yeah, I, I, I really applaud the authors like yourself that come on my show that have uh, multiple books. Cause you know, even being a musician and all the, the, I know about the, that end of it, the writing, but, you know, writing a book. <laughs> and, you know, I'm pretty good at, at writing anyway. I, and I'm not to toot my own horn. I just loved it when I was growing up. So I'm I'm pretty good at it. And I was getting my editor. It wasn't about the grammar. It was more about specific things that have to con- concur with other things in the timeline. It was more like that. And keeping my tenses right. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm writing yes. in the present tense or the past tense. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that, that is really <laughs> tough. You know, I know it is. So yeah, I totally understand what you mean. And I write first person present tense. So you oh, find out, okay. you find out when they find out. So, um, and that's how I write. I write, I'm kind of a pantser. I have an outline as far as, you know, like I know what the person looks like. I know what year it is. I know the setting and that's all consistent. Right. Mm-hmm. But after that, and I know kind of where I want the story to go in my mind, but after that, it's open, open playing field for whatever happens. So if somebody dies that day, I'm like, well, well I didn't know that was coming. <laughs> and and it happens, you know, and I think that's why my books did fairly well, is because I truly just let the books, you know, when I first started writing them, it was kind of rigid at first. But after that with Carla, because she was so outlined and I love that. It made me feel like I, I want to do I want to do it more freely. And so when I did it more freely, I the book kind of just wrote itself. All of them did. Uh, once I knew the outline and knew the characters and and what they look like and and the year and you know the setting and everything mm-hmm. else, it was just so 
It was so much fun. It's, as you know, it is so much work. Well, it is, you know, in mine, since mine's based on, a, based on a true story, I don't want to eliminate oh, yeah. some of the chapters. And you know, if you go with your traditional publisher, you know, they'll, they'll they want to take over what you've yeah. written. And I, I, yeah. I don't, if it was just me making up a story or something, yeah, you're, okay, you know, I could probably live with that, you know. Sure. But since it is real and I'm thinking back and some of these, I have to really, wow, that really happened to me, you know. I know. Uh, wow. You know. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, did buy, I, I did buy two of your books yesterday, I, so I'm waiting for them to come maybe this Saturday. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Oh, uh, my goodness. I got Graveyard Watchman book one. Oh, yes. And I don't know, I'm, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Valir House. Yeah, Vier House. Yeah, that's the one I wrote with um, C.D. Hussey. And I got the and first that, one of that one. Okay, good. Well, that one is, as you know, you probably read the synopsis. I don't know if you did, but mm -hmm. it's that's the book based in New Orleans. And it's two brothers that own a voodoo shop in New Orleans. Yeah, and I wrote about one brother and she wrote about the other, primarily. We put the two together. So, that, so it, it is like one person wrote the book. You know, she was like, you kind of take over Julian and I'll kind of take over, you know, the, I don't want to give too much away. So oh, right, right, right. It, yeah, yeah. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I know. I know. And so, you want to sell the book too, you know? Yeah. And then Graveyard Watchman, that's probably my favorite book that I've ever written. And let me tell you why. I wrote Atticus, for, Atticus first and I love that book. And that's a real popular book of mine. It was very first solo book I wrote after C.D. Hussey. The Graveyard Watchman, I Al, I wrote that. I don't even know how it happened. All of a sudden, I had a book. Oh, wow. I started it on Wattpad. I don't know if you've ever heard of Wattpad, W-A-T-T-P-A-D. It's a writer-reader app, uh -huh. and I really just wanted to keep my writing skills up. So every day, you can just write, just upload your, your stuff, and you get feedback right away because there's a lot of people that get free stuff. It's like a, it's, it's not a fan fiction site. But it's people do write fan fiction on it. It's just anybody that writes and anybody that reads that wants to read free stuff or provide free stuff for people, right? Right. Because you get feedback right away. To me, that's like gold. Right. And I, every day, I'd say, okay, I want to write 500 words every day, every morning. And I did that. Sometimes it was 250. Sometimes it was 800. You know, it just depended. All of a sudden, I had a whole book. Uh-huh. I was featured on Wattpad and I have like almost a million views on that book. And I was like, wow. okay, I guess people are, well, no, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't, I was doing it every day. And I guess that was also good for the algorithm. I had no clue. I had no clue that would happen. Uh -huh. I just did it because I was truly trying to keep the writing skills up. So it's done really well. And I love that book. So that's yeah, why you, it means so much to me. Yeah. You mentioned Atticus, you know, Atticus, you know, that, that looked in interesting and, and Apollo's yeah. son. And yeah. peripheral. Well, peripheral, it is. I don't know if it's available anymore. Here's the deal. With peripheral, I've rebranded it Apollo Sun. Oh, okay. So it's actually Apollo Sun, not no longer peripheral. And I need to actually remove it from Amazon. And I'm having a hard time getting it off. Once oh, you, no. once, yeah, I don't know why Amazon's being so hard about it. But that's actually Apollo Sun. That's been rebranded. So totally almost rewrote the whole book. So, which was fine. You know, mm -hmm. it was just, it was one of those things where it was a mutual thing. It was fine. And then I also have a book that it's no longer available on Amazon, but I will rebrand that one. It's called Easy Fix. I've written eight books, but I've got five available on Amazon. So okay, there you yeah, go. That was my next question. How many books have yeah. you written? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, congratulations, man. I, I know that's, uh, these people come on to my show and I was like, oh, you've written what? How many books? It's not easy. And, you know, another thing about writing, too, as you probably know, it's not it's not cheap. I mean, it's not, no. when you, when you have I had to hire, you know, an editor, you know, mm -hmm. and you go through two rounds of editing mm -hmm. because you, you know, you have to fix what they say and then they look over it again and then they, you know, whatever. And then, and then we're probably so boring to people right now, but then also you got to hire a cover artist. You got to hire a formatter. You got to hire a, a great, you actually have to hire a proofreader mm -hmm. besides just getting an editor because right. editors don't always catch everything. So uh -huh. then you got to get beta readers to catch it before you even do anything else. So it's just, it's time consuming. It's a lot of money. And I did a lot of nice big signings and I was so grateful to do them with, you know, Colleen Hoover. She's kind of a friend of mine now. We've known each other for years. She used to go to a book signing that I used to host. She's amazing. Just such a lovely soul. But I've gotten to where, to be honest with you, Al, I'm, I'm no longer really writing right now. I'm really just focusing on the podcast because I just love it so much. And what happens is when I interview someone and you have to go through the editing process because I edit the crap. Oh, I do too. I take a lot of the ums and not every um. Uh -huh. and, and you know what? I, 
I can get it done and then it's done. I don't have to go through any more editing. I don't have to go through any beta readers. I don't have to hire a cover artist. It's just done. Yeah. And I love that about it, you know? So <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've only had a couple complaints on my editing. It's only because I took out, I heard you say this, I think on your latest episode, I did listen to it. Uh, oh. Of which I loved your guest. I can't think, think of her name right now. Uh, Nikki, but, Nikki Allen. Right. And, you know, yeah. and, you, and you were talking about, you know, the, the hatred about, you know, why can't people just love one another? You know, I have my own thoughts. You have your own thoughts and we may or may not agree. I don't know, but mm -hmm. that's none of my business. On yours, you do Bigfoot, UFOs, aliens, ghosts, afterlife, religion. Yeah. I see you went, you went into prisons. You got a serial killers. I mean, you did one on the uh, <laughs> husband infidelity, you know? So I, I <laughs> Yeah, like, right. You you do listen to my podcast. Well, yeah, well I haven't listened to all of them. I, I'm just went through like you know yeah. some of your uh, highlights of the shows. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. I, I was really impressed that you know you really do put the effort and time and 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 you're enjoyable to listen to. I thought, and oh. any of you out there listening to this, please listen to because I want to know. Oh, I mean, it's a yeah. really great it's a really great podcast. You do a great job, and I, I love your guests and keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you're loving it. You're, you can tell because you're not out there for the money. Mm -mm. But you know, if yeah. I have one person <laughs> that says, "Okay, you touched me with this with this topic," yeah, then there's that one person that that will listen to me now. But you know, oh yeah, well, see, that's another thing. I just I go in blindly, and thank you by the way for the lovely compliments. Uh -huh. If you go into podcasting for money, you're going to be solely disappointed. Okay, so just don't even. Don't even try because that's and it, and it sounds like you didn't do that either. You went in because you love it and you mm -hmm. love talking about scary paranormal things. And by the way, I'm, I may have to have you on my podcast because I'd like to hear about your scary stories. Oh, yeah. I love that after my book comes out. And uh... well, let me know what you'll have to do. You yeah, you know how to get a hold of me. Now. <laughs> yeah. And, and no, and what we'll do is when your book comes out, we can promote the book and we'll talk about it. Because here's the deal. I love talking to anyone and everyone who interests me. And you're right, whether it's somebody who's been in infidelity with the, you know, how they overcame it, mm -hmm. or somebody that's prepping people for prison because they were in prison, or someone who left a cult, or someone who died and they came back to talk about it, or mm -hmm. psychic medium that we talk about Bigfoot and what they think about it. I mean, I love it. I love it all because that's why I named it because I want to know. Because right. I want to know. <laughs> right. You know? And yeah, I, yeah. I, and it's, it's just, a platform you can actually have people share their opinion without being called crazy or out there or lunatic, you know, Oh, right. That's, yeah. that's what I love about my podcast. You're probably the same way that you, and you learn because you learn from certain guests, something new. Absolutely. That's the thing. And because my husband, and you know this, he thinks it's a bunch of garbly goo. He's definitely not into the paranormal, but you know what? And it's, I'll tell your, your listeners, you know, this, cause you've heard my podcast. He loves me dearly and he supports me and he, he's so proud of me. He thinks this is amazing. So, you know, and he grounds me because you can get a little woo woo and a little crazy in your head. <laughs> And then you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> right. You know, you know, and, and, and it's fun to kind of get out there and, and woo with people that are, are like minded. However, it's not like it's always that way with us. Like we do the normal family things and all the holiday things everybody else does. It's just fun to talk about things that I don't get to talk to a lot of people about. I'm in the Bible Belt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and a lot of people don't don't enjoy the things I talk about, and that's okay. I you know I have no judgment either way. You know, mm. it's either for you or it's not. You know. Well, that's like my son-in-law. You know, he says uh, he'll believe there's a ghost out there when it comes up and kicks him in the ass. You know, yeah, exactly. so so <laughs> you know, right. and and my wife, she she's like your husband. She doesn't like the paranormal. She doesn't like. She's very leery about when I go out to say a haunted house and I'm. I'm out of the, I don't really do paranormal investigations anymore, hmm. but okay. I, I did a, a documentary like 20 years ago on uh, ghosts in the Valley. That's what, hence my podcast. So I have a cross on my wall to let to me and one behind me because <laughs> she says, do not bring that crap home here, you know, with you. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. And you know, it, it's, it's, you know, some people just, they don't like it and they're a little leery of it. because that's maybe okay. They, absolutely because you know you're not there and my thing is you're not there to change your mind i'm not here to change my husband's mind he's here and he's being a human in his little meat sack the way he should be and <laughs> you know and that's the way it is for all of us you know we're here uh, to experience life and he came to experience it the way he wanted to experience it and but he lets me do the same thing and i hear that even at seminars i go to you know mm -hmm. uh, people don't believe in it or they don't you know and that's, and that's that's cool but what i found out through all through life is the same thing with uh anything else alzheimer's or anything else you have you deal with 
you don't really know it until you experience it yourself. Right. Uh, uh, and it's the same thing with ghosts. You know, you, you won't, you won't believe until something happens to you. I mean, I feel like because I'm, I'm able to communicate with my mom who passed away, which is so weird. And uh-huh. people are going to go, okay, now she's really here. <laughs> what do you, who the heck are you interviewing, Al? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think all of us have the ability to communicate with, with God or whoever you believe is your, you know, somebody you worship or not or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just think we all have the ability to talk to people who we loved. I don't think love ever dies. I don't think the energy of love ever dies. And because I feel that way, I'm still connected with, you know, family members on the other side and I just talk to them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes one of them talks. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. But but they're here. Like they're right here. Like my mom just grew a superpower. She just gained a superpower. She's just the incredible invisible woman now to me. And I can literally just talk to her. Mm -hmm. It's my, the psychic medium I always have on my podcast. You know, she's my resident psychic medium. I go to her for everything. She's so wise about everything. And she goes, all you have to do is talk to her. And I'm like, I've been trying to talk to her. Mm -hmm. She goes, don't stop. So finally (laughs) I'm like, okay, what would mom say to me if I said, hi, mom? I said, and so I said in my mind, hi, sweetheart, because that's what she would say to me. Uh-huh. So I said, hi, sweetheart, to myself, like a dummy. Okay. Uh-huh. And I feel like I'm just making it up in my mind because I was at the time. And so finally, I, you know, after a while, I was like, well, mom, if you're there. What do you do all day? Do you have a job? And I hear, this is not for me. I hear, I'm a greeter. Oh, really? Yes. And I'm like, okay, what the heck is a greeter? I don't <laughs> know it's a thing. And I was like, well, what's, you know, she kind of just said that she kind of greets people that don't have like, like kids that don't know anybody on the other side yet. They're too new of a soul. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. she helped guide them and stuff. And anybody really doesn't really matter who it is, but um, she kind of gave me that. It's it's more of a download. It's not like she's have, we have this conversation. It's more of an understanding if that makes sense at all. Mm-hmm. And then I do, I did say, well, do you like see Marilyn Monroe or, you know, what do you, what do you see? She goes, honey, it doesn't work that way up here. Nobody's a star. Nobody's a movie star. There's nobody special. We're all amazing fragments of God. That's all we are up here. We're all love unconditional. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. And I'm like, did you, my stepfather, who was a very great man and I loved him and, and he died before she did. But I said, did you see Bill? And she goes, yeah, we're together now because he was the love of her life. I said, do you guys still sail? Because he used to sail all around the Gulf and they'd sail in lakes and stuff. She goes, we do it all the time. So so you can do that up there? She goes, we can do everything (laughs) that we want. I'm like, okay, well, how can you talk to me if you're sailing? She goes, oh, you just don't understand. She goes, I can be anywhere. I said, well, that sounds like what God would do. And she goes, we are God and we are part of God. We can do what God can do because we are part of God. That's awesome. And I'm like, yeah. wow, okay, thanks, mom. You know, and she's told me all, all kinds of things, and they've been verified. And I had, I was like, okay, I guess I'm getting it right now. I mean, I'm not doing it for a living or anything. Right. I just talk to mom. <laughs> I, I tell a few people what I've discovered, and they're like, oh no, she's right. I'm like, okay, good. I love that story. I want to, I want to thank you for coming on. I really applaud you for writing and your podcast and being a mother. And and I see you do <laughs> you wrote you, you wrote in your uh, spare time as being a mother. Uh, yeah. a stay at home mom and now your yes. grandmother. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know it's crazy. And I, you know, at least I have something to do. My husband's like, I'm just glad you have hobbies. And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, you gotta keep busy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no. Yeah. And guys, if you guys want to look at my books, they're all available on Amazon and my podcast is uh, available wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, and Al, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Thank you, Leslie Fear, for coming on the show. And please go to her podcast, Because I Want to Know, and purchase her books. They are fantastic. I just I just picked up two myself. And I will put her links at the bottom of this episode. And please come back on Halloween, October 31st. I'm going to have a special show. It's from my own hometown of Newton Falls, Ohio. And it will be on the Crybaby Bridge. We have the oldest active covered bridge in the state of Ohio. I'm going to walk there. It's only about a quarter mile from my home. See if I can get any baby crying. <laughs> it should be interesting, to say the least. All right. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you, Lizzie Fear. And I'll see you on Halloween with another great episode of Ghost in the Valley Podcast. Ghost in the Valley Podcast.